Do do Let's pick some different music this time. Yeah. Oh, does that not show up? Here we go. It only pops up when I. That's weird. Okay. Um. Streaming. Okay. So, switch to this view. Um. Today I have a project from a friend. She wants a stamp dispenser. And I'm like, hmm, I could model that. I mean, obviously I'm going to download one first and print that, and I'll have that in the background, I think, in a little window. I think I can do it, like, maybe this way? Yeah, there we go. I'd, I'd have something set up that I just haven't used in a while for, you can see when I bump it there, um, specifically for uh, displaying the, okay, go away. Don't need this. Nor. Okay. Uh, I have some things I can set up. Is that gonna... No, okay, that doesn't come through in the audio. That's great. Um, but I'm gonna be printing this in the background at the same time. Ooh, one sec. Plug some cables in. And light. There we go. Which you can now see on this camera. So, basically the idea is I'm going to print a uh, printing a stamp roll because I'm not sure that my design is going to work over here, which you'll be able to see over in the, in the upper right over here. Um, and then at the same time, I will be trying to reverse engineer one for the first time because I've never done that before. I haven't used a scan to 3D add-in, but apparently it's super handy for this sort of thing. I've just like never used it. Also, repping Excelsior, hella good. Um, I just realized I haven't included... Uh, oops. I haven't included the links to the... to the stamp things that I'm going to be emulating. Uh, CC by... I think most of them are CC by uh, attribution license, but... Just in case, I don't plan to sell this, although I may also not distribute it, so. <laughs> Do. Okay, those should be in the description now if you want to refresh or for everyone who comes later. Um, for now, I think we can just kind of hop to modeling things. So, we already have, I've already imported the body. Um, I haven't really done any processing on it yet, but I think really the, the sort of big tool here is just a big old segment features and then pick things a face at a time to like tighten up all your tolerances maybe keep them a little loose maybe can i pick like group planar segments by grouping facets that represent planes let's not group anything oh hang on now that one picks up the cylinder in the middle there that's kind of nice Oops. Okay, so if I keep my crease tolerance low, I can make some edges here to start. But it's really not clear <laughs> what happens after that. Uh, so let's do another, another segment, I guess. Select body. Actually, can I... I can't select planes. Okay. Okay. So I can just like kind of start hammering away at at sort of gradually whoops gradually picking every flat face in here. And there's plenty of them because this is kind of a weird model. It seems to at least have partially hidden some aspects of things. It's not really clear what it wants me to do with... Oh, hang on. What happens if I shovel the slider around? I don't know what I'm doing! That wasn't immediately apparent. Uh, right. No fests identified for segmenting. Okay. That's weird. I guess some of these faces are just going to be kind of screwy, so there's not really a whole bunch I'm going to be able to do about that. Let's try 
I think the one that I really care about is I want to get inside there. Um, oh god, that's super wrong. This is definitely not 15 meters long from here to here. I imported this body wrong, so I have to restart that. <laughs> Whoops. Don't save. Reopen. Uh, post stamp. Okay, options. I'm just going to guess that the units are probably in millimeters. Because that seems pretty safe. Group facets into faces. Let's, let's see if it actually does that. Let's see what happens when I just click random buttons and see what happens. And that seems to have been at least somewhat successful. Um, segment, please. Hmm. Yeah, so that's got some flat faces out of it. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better than it was before. I got one more up here. Yeah. One more up here. Okay. Well, let's switch to faces view. And it's got the god awful. Boy. Does it say you do not need to select all the facets? Okay. So I'm just going to select some of them. No faces identified for segmenting. But I, I, did all, I did everything you asked. No, actually, wait, maybe that face... Oh, yeah, that face is already on its own. And I've got messages. Nope. Okay, nothing important. <laughs> okay. So it looks like... What it's gone and done is it's unified every sort of weird, extraneous, cylindrical face. Uh, everything else has been sort of left up. Joined up. It says it doesn't want every, it doesn't need every face, but it looks like it kind of wants it. Which is very frustrating. Especially because this guy didn't segment his model out very well. Or whatever software he used to export it didn't do a very good job. My guess is probably Blender. It's because that's just what most people use these days. And I don't have music. I should fix that. Um, and my printer shut itself off because I forgot to start the thing. So I'm going to switch gears here momentarily and <laughs> print... Is this one? This one seems fine. It definitely wants its... Uh... This one is from... Nope, not that one. This guy. This model right here. This other file. So I need the screw as well. Boink. I'll just drag that over there. And this has no accommodations for being actually made printable, so I'm just going to kind of wang it in there and see what happens. <laughs> I think by default I don't have supports turned on right now, so I will need to turn that on. And I keep forgetting to do music. Oh my god. There we go. Music. Good music, even. Who would have guessed? So let's see what this looks like sliced. I have no idea if those threads are going to come out well. They don't. I can't check these for tolerances. I'm just going to assume that this guy knew what he was doing. Bad assumption. Don't make that assumption. Okay. Preview. That looks broadly fine. Those threads are going to be extra donked, but uh, just going to have to send it, I think. Oh, hang on, I, did, I only did touching build plate, not everywhere. Definitely needs everywhere because some of these features you can only support from internally, so. Oof. Oh. Uh, let's go back to the Octoprint window. Turn 
that on. Uh, wait for it to connect. Oh, the Kira window looks super jacked. I'll show that to you in just a sec. In the meantime, we will get this started heating up. And now I have some noise in the background, which is lovely. Okay, main back to main monitor. So we've got this guy, which is just all kinds of jacked up. Oh boy. That might come out okay. But it's... Well, I don't know. I think it runs a... a vaguely sufficient chance of coming out kind of okay <laughs> which is really you know the most you can ask for these days <laughs> i also have no idea if this is going to fit on my friend's table so whoops um yeah i'm gonna send it <laughs> just gonna chuck this guy into the uh thingiverse pile open folder Drag that G code across the screen over to my other monitor. Uh, wait, hang on. This is gonna go into one-offs. Which is full of a lot of really big files, oh my god. There's a single 60 gigabyte file in there. Just gonna nix that. Okay. There's two 60 megabyte files in there. Hmm. I promise I know what I'm doing. See, now this bit is just unnecessary. Like, you could totally design this to have features such that it wouldn't need those supports there, or would it try to generate them, but here we are. And this probably doesn't need supports either, but it looks just jacked up enough that I'm going to do it. If we, if we slice down, if we look the layers, this is a straight point, which you should kind of chamfer those entries generally. And also this has no reinforcement and is going to be flexi cell, but I'm just going to not worry about that too much. Uh... Oh, I was going to share this somewhere. Empty monitor. Do, do, do. Okay. Uh, yeah. And also, no fillet down there. Big no-no. Don't do that. It's real bad. And kind of like a weird half fillet up here. It seems like it would escape real easy. Actually, you know what? It wouldn't because it would always curl this way. Just because of its shape. So. Because the roll would always try to stay rolled. So it's not ever going to try and hop off that lip. Uh, okay. What next? Okay, I need to mute those. <laughs> uh, focus assist. Priority only? Alarms only. Let's do alarms only. And I can just check stuff on my phone. Yeah. All right. So this is ready to print. I think the file's already. I can switch over to Octoprint window. The file's all loaded up. It's been run through the Arc slicer. If we take a quick look at the G code, let it load up. Looks good to me. Print. And then that'll just be running in the background. And it will show up on the main monitor screen. I think. Yeah. I mean, once it finishes uh, heating up, of course. All right. That's printed. Good to go in the background. This extra weird dumpster fire is... Oh, gross. It's just going to be gross, isn't it? It's going to tell me... What that diameter is at least. 2.6671. 71 millim or no inches divided by pi in millimeters. 21.5 millimeters, roughly. 
according to some math. Oh, gross. This isn't segmented either. Let's see if I can't do a quick... Uh... Can't quickly... Will it, will it even let me... I just want to group these faces so I can see what that radius is, please. Okay. No faces identified for segmenting. Bite me! It's very rude. Don't say that much. Why don't I just tell it, take this whole body, segment it, please. Looks like it would try and chop up some of these other ones for no reason. Okay, whoops, nope, don't need to segment anymore. That's pretty close, but it's still not going to be quite right. It's horrible, I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, let's try... Let's give myself some room to breathe and look at this. And think about it and just wonder. So this edge... Select loop. Gross. I mean, if we zoom, if we zoom way out, like it's clear that, broadly speaking, the right faces have split themselves up. But I can't get these dang cylindrical ones to meet nicely. Is there like a workflow I'm missing? Uh, segmenting fillets. Let's go. On, let's go on an adventure. Let's. Go figure out how to do this. No, I don't want to do a video. I don't have time for that. Mesh rip. This is why people should publish step files. <sighs> Delete hole? You can just do that? You can delete faces and then delete the hole? <laughs> what? So like a... Oh, here we go. Mesh modeling. I'm just straight up missing the tabs for this. <laughs> Analysis, maybe? Let's go check it, take a look at this. Mesh modeling, decimate, surface from mesh. Sick. Okay, cylindrical face. Calculate. Hey, that almost got kind of far. Oh, when it's gone, which one is? It's gone and segmented the bottom again. We'll not have that. Simply shan't. Somebody's messed with me again. <sighs> okay. Surface for mesh. Let's pick cylindrical. Pick like a handful of these faces. Give it plenty to work with. I have no idea if this is actually helpful or not because I've never used these tools before. <laughs> Calculate. Hey, that looks like that even looks like a face. That's sick. Boink. Did it just make a surface there? It totally did! That's wild! Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Um, what now, nerds? We got tools to make surfaces. Uh, surface from mesh. Let's do it again. Let's pick... 
whole bunch of these guys. Just kind of randomly through here. Say okay. Fix it out. Let's see, this surface, or let's, can I just isolate this guy? Yeah. Sweet as. Radius 0.7 inches. There we go. Now we got useful numbers. Alright, so. Um, 0.7 inches on the interior. We need one more surface from mesh. We're just going to do more of this sort of really spastic clicking. <laughs> Okay, that's probably good. Whoops, I forgot to preview. Uh, quick. I wish there was an easy isolate key, but there's not, so. This guy is, oh, 0.85 diameter on the interior, 0.7 radius in the exterior. So that's 0.85 and 1.4. That, I think, is actually enough to work with, so. Really, the only other thing I need... Actually, let's re-isolate that. I do want to know how far apart these are. One inch. Cool. Stamps are exactly an inch wide. That's what I'm going to assume. <laughs> Exit isolate. We're going to save this as... I'm out of the Thingiverse stuff folder and call this like the... Mesh... Oh, okay, I did actually need to recall what it's called. Uh, oh, poster stamp dispenser. Mest, meshed, uh, postage, stamp dispenser. Hmm. Looks good to me. I think now it's just, uh, draw the rest of the owl. <laughs> Oh, there are segments there. Okay, that's just looks weird. Hmm. All right, I don't think I have a new part file open, so let's go do that. I am going to do this in millimeters just because I don't know. I'm not everything in millimeters these days. We'll start with. Well, this is good. Start front plane. Then I need exterior, which is 1.4 inches to scale everything. This guy, which is 0.5 inches, also to scale everything. Now I saw one design that had a really nice, like, it was, it would automatically peel the stamps for you, but the more I think about that, the more it seems grossly overcomplicated and like something I don't want to deal with, so I'm just going to not deal with it. Alrighty. What else have we got? We need... This is going to be triply nested, which is going to make it weird and probably fussy. Let's just kind of draw an outline around it. Just do like that kind of dealio. Make that concentric, but not really. <laughs> Hang on. Be concentric. There we go. Okay. Trimbo. Don't like that that one is done that way, so we'll change that to just a, an edge to find one, which reads a little easier on the eyes. What else? I guess I have to offset this to get a good distance for my... Oh, no, I can just pick this edge and make this one tangent there. And tangent here. Make these two guys collinear. 
and then give myself a, an edge distance here, which we'll call like four millimeters. Okay, that's probably fine. Take a random guess at the gap. Oh, I don't know. How thick, how thick is a postage stamp? It's very thin. Uh, five millimeters seems fine. Nope, that's way too big. Just based on how big it looks. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't really like that, though. Looks kind of goofy. Let's do this instead. Let's make some arcs and make them... I think concentric would be the right constraint to make these correct. Concentric. Yeah. And then we can just tell these to be... Tell these to be whatever we want our opening width to be. So 2.5 seems fine. But I also do not have... pleasant definition to just let's see can I just extend this no I'd have to add another to do it like this trim those hats off yeah that looks nice I think I'm gonna do this can I do the fillet in here too 10 millimeters is gonna break things one millimeter should be fine though that dimension somewhere nicer. If that's even remotely possible. It, SolidWorks likes to get really fiddly with where you can and cannot place dimensions, unfortunately. Just because it's SolidWorks and that's what it does. I'm going to tell it that I want a... Whoops. It is construction, right? Yep. I would like a 5mm droop from where it would normally be. Just kind of a wild, wild ass guess. So now we can extrude that 25.4. We have sort of our base. And now I have to figure out where I'm going from here. <laughs> hmm. Extrude boss face, please, on this face. Just gonna convert this and then trim away the excess. Things I don't need. Draw an extra line here. If I if instead of adding that line there, I like removed one of the other of these and then extended it down, the next time that I changed if I changed this geometry at all or add a different line somewhere, then it would break horribly and blow up in my face, because it would try to place new lines where there were old ones, and then you'd have double lines and SolidWorks really does not like that. Ooh, you know what? I should... I'm just going to let that be however thick it wants to be, and I'm going to... D3 at sketch 1 is how thick I'm going to make this guy. So I can set this equal to D3 at sketch 1, and then whatever I design my... whatever I define my wall thickness as in this part of the model, it will then also feature on the backside. So I could shrink it down to three if I wanted to, and the whole thing would shrink a little bit. There's a print coming along. Let's go take a look at that. Hmm. Exposure changes a lot, doesn't it? Whoops. I think I like the slightly larger base cam, so I'm going to do that. Whoops. Yes, I do wish to remove that one. Whoops. Nope. Hang on. I broke something. <laughs> oh, crap. Uh, Technical difficulties. I think I just straight up removed the... Uh, I 
by webcam. There we go. Hang on. Almost there. Fit to screen. Nope. <laughs> now it's over my face. <laughs> uh, move to top. There we go. So I want to copy this instance over to here. Hey, check that out. And now there's two of me. <laughs> yes, remove that one, add this one. Now I'm a constant size everywhere. Not quite. Now I'm a constant size everywhere. Look at me. I am transformation invariant. <laughs> Wouldn't be a Clark stream if he wasn't screwing around the whole time with, with OBS. <laughs> okay. Um, what else? So we need to add a lip of some kind, for sure. So I'm just gonna... Hmm. Street boss. I don't know which face I set that on. Okay, I picked I picked it on the outer face, so I'll, I'll do the same thing out here. Screw to boss, pick this face, convert this sketch, and then from here I only have to do really modifications to this to get it to comply how I want. So I think what I want to do is two parallel lines, two equal parallel lines. And that'll give me two like capturing edges to hold onto the uh, onto the dispenser. And maybe I'll do something fun like extend those outward a little bit this way. This one I certainly do not want it to be on the edge. I don't think I want this to be on the edge either. But that should let me I was kind of hoping it was going to let me drag that around a little bit more. Hmm. How rude. Okay. I'm gonna leave this for now, actually, and go back and remove the fillet from the inside there. Uh, extend this one, this one, and then trim this guy and this guy. If I am very lucky, that won't break things elsewhere. But it looks like it did. <laughs> the sketch, what is it even doing? Why is it decided? Hang on. Control A, delete. Click. Offset. There we go. Unbroken. <laughs> okay, these two. Uh, Parallel, Alt E, Alt Q, equal. Some quick trimming. Shift click on this edge, and then clicking on this edge will tell it to draw a dimension between this edge and this edge, and so I can easily set how much overlap I want, which is, I'm just gonna say, three millimeters. This guy set it at 45, so it comes out to a nice kind of a nice visually symmetrical angle is what I'm going to go with. That's what I'm attempting to go for here. Now, this needs a sort of capturing edge, which means I have to extend. Oops. Extend these edges, make it concentric, and say I want to come up by. Oh, I don't know. A millimeter and a quarter. Just so that I have a number. A lot more messages. Whoops. <laughs> That's busted. What's going on? Oh, it's still extruding by an inch. Still need this to be D3 at sketch one. That looks kind of right. Use some quick building ops. Uh, I 
think I want to do say D3 at sketch 1 over 2 just to give us kind of a nice whoops, not the whole face please that's going to break things grab these edges doesn't like doing those both at the same time well, I guess if it does that outer one, though, it's okay. I'll just leave it at the outer one, because that should be plenty, really. Um, can focus on filling the rest of this stuff. Oh, it doesn't like doing that at the same time, does it? Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to fill it... I think I'm going to do this building separately. But I can do these guys for right now. Oops, not that guy. Well, you know what, I'm going to do just one millimeter. Because it seems like the the 1.5 is definitely going to break because this gap is only 1.25. So I'm just going to not deal with that, not think about that. Try not to worry too hard. Looks pretty good, though. Chamfer. Make this maybe a 2mm chamfer. Well, maybe even only 1. 1. 1.2, maybe? Because I don't want it to be, like, to overpower this, this gap right here. But I do want it to have a chamfered entrance into the pocket. Hmm, I don't think I want chamfers on the inside of the pocket though. Because those will those will be sort of capturing edges for the uh <laughs> For the thingamajig. <laughs> Let's come up before the chamfer. Well, actually, hang on. There's one more edge I want to chamfer. This guy right here. He can join into the fun. This guy's going to be only 0.4 because it can be quite small. And it totally breaks that. I think it's because it's removing edges or something. Hmm. If that was less steep, it would break less. What happens if I move it before the... Oh, that's weird. It breaks that part of the chamfer. Oh, I see, because that, that angle's too small. So this this fillet actually should happen first. This filleting on the interior. So we're going to move it up there. And do all these fillets before we get to the other stuff. Like one millimeter or something. Nope, too big. 0.5? It doesn't like interfering with its own edges, that's for sure. Point four would be really small, but it does seem kind of adequate. Let's champ for that exit too, because we can. Because no one can tell us not to. What happens if I shrink this a little bit to like 0.4? Whoops. Oh, hang on. I should define this as the total gap in here, since that's more what actually matters, because I want to be able to... It has to be wide enough, just wide enough, to uh, fit stamps into. Like 
eight, one maybe? Can I get, uh, it, won't, it won't let me go to one. So I guess I can get away with 0.8, which means on the chamfer dimension, I can get away with probably a little bit more as well. 0.8. Hang on, what did I just change there? Let me edit the dang feature, please. 0.6 maybe? Yeah, that looks not that bad, honestly. <sighs> I wish I knew how thick they were. Stamp roll dimensions. Get ready. <laughs> say multiple formats coil of 500 product specs stamp size full booklets print quantity 1.5 billion it's a lot of stamps stamp coil dimensions Stamp coil dispenser dimensions. Let's see, Amazon, what have you got? Nope, that's just basically a basket. Same one in all three, isn't it? Weird. Okay, well, uh, let's go take a peek at the or take a peek at the octopus window. Slice them right along. Center viewport. Good lord. Three and a half hours for something that fits in the palm of your hand. Need a faster printer. Oh well. I think I am going to get a Prusa eventually. I've seen a lot of people recommend those and they do seem like kind of the, uh, they seem like kind of the ticket. Whoops, not that. Just this edge. That, I think, is going to end up being really interesting to print. But maybe there's enough ledge there that my that, like support features will grab it okay. And I won't have to worry about it too much. These ones should be alright. I'm not too worried about those. <sighs> Problem is, this looks really boring. <laughs> Snap dispenser. Boring stamp dispenser. <laughs> That's what it is. Okay. I think what I'm going to do then instead, there was one other idea that I wanted to sort of mash out was do a, a clamp of sorts. Like, that takes all the things that are bad about this clamp and designs a good clamp. So I'm just going to do that for a little bit. Maybe it'll even get its own project folder. Who knows? I'm just gonna start with the uh, let's see, sketch. Let's go. Make that. 
that midpoint. Get rid of the coincident relation. It's actually, do I want it to be midpoint? I don't know. I think so. Yeah. Do I? I don't know what I want. <laughs> I had this funky idea for a for a clamp that relied on sort of an adapting like a super short throw screw and then you could basically slot the lower part of the clamp onto it. And of course I could draw it out pen and pencil, but I don't think that's nearly as fun. And the music is stopping. Hmm. No midpoint, but yes on coincidence. Then make these guys symmetric. Make this one construction. And then just kind of guess at where I want these. You know what? I think. Maybe those do actually have to be sharp interior corners. Or if not sharp, then they have to be quite small. Two millimeters, roughly. And then this distance is going to have to be close to like 15 millimeters. And the total interior length of the clamp is going to be, say, 40 millimeters. Construction? Okay, construction. There we go. So sketch. Sketch on. Whoops. Nope. Started editing the first one again. Let's come to the front. Actually, I don't want to do that. I want to do a single vertical construction line. Then. Select all of it and mirror it. That way I get a very easy uh, very easy set of controls for everything. Let's make it like 20 millimeters. Make that four. Total width 20. Whoops. Things have gotten slightly cross out here. Those equal. Make that coincident. Actually, I don't want those to be equal. I think I just want them to be. I think I want this to be a little bit wider. Like maybe six millimeters. So sketch. Swept boss base. And then. This whole guy, both directions, please. Except that's not going to work because I need to have clearance for the fastener. <laughs> I think I have an idea how I can do that, though. Maybe? Let's do an extruded... Actually, let's do something sillier. Let's do a whole straight delete face and just get rid of all this. Nope, that's wrong. Wrong and bad. Extruded cut. Go from this face. Convert. Exit. Up to surface. We'll just pick that surface and then it should wipe that for us. Fill it. I'm going to be super fast and loose with the geometry here because this is mostly an experiment in... You know what? Actually, if I do it this way, it's not even sort of respecting the original spirit of what I wanted to do. Kind of a yikes. Okay, how about this? Let's, rather than doing all that silliness, let's, uh, oh god. Wrong sketch. Yeah, I'm gonna do this the way that I wanted to do it originally. 
she's gonna be extra silly. And I keep picking the wrong sketch. So trim these, all this stuff. Uh, whoops, don't want the center point there, I just want the line. Make those symmetric, set the center lines up there. Seems fine. Is it though? Yeah, it is. <laughs> We'll make it say 70 millimeters long, roughly three inches, and say that it comes over 30 inches, seems like enough. Maybe even only 25. And then I kind of have to guess at how far, actually it shouldn't be symmetric because where, how far away from the corner is what matters having that be on the center line correctly. So now we have to... Oops. Why is this sketch still not fully defined? Oh, because that's not even vertical. Lovely. That sweep isn't going to work no matter what I do, because I need to fix this sketch first. First direction, first direction, first direction is pretty close to black magic. There we go. Now I just have to figure out what I want the rest of this to look like. So I came 10 millimeters away from the edge over there. So let's do fillet of. Oops. Actually, no, let's, let's do the full, full round fillet now. Another great fillet. Fight me. That should work just fine. <laughs> but of course it does not. I just make them five mils. It's good enough. Oh. Even cooler. I could do all this at the same time. Make it only like three millimeters, and then I have all of my extra geometry there. Oops. Come on, last edge, please. Thank you. Now I have to design let's see, extruded boss from the right plane, right plane. How do I want to do this? Okay, have an idea. Come up like this. Short arc. Another arc. Short little bit of vertical. Over. And then back. And then we'll make it that tangent. I think I want to make these actually make it do that, and then have all of these radii be the same. And then I have a very good control to make sure that uh, there's really no funny business, so to speak. Make that horizontal. Yeah. Tell this to be two mils, maybe? That's kind of big. Well, it's going to have to be kind of big, though, because it's going to have to be... Parts are going to be grabbing onto it. It's like to be three mils. 45. Coincident. Now I'm just gonna have to pick a height for this. So I want the minimum distance to be, say, 
30 mils. You know, I could design this in a way that would make it so that... Uh, if I cut those bits into the side of this, then I don't have to worry about these getting in the way of the desk that I'm clamping on. Which would, I think, be a much cooler solution. And also, these have to face the other direction anyway. What am I doing? Is that going to work? I think that'll work. Okay, this sketch is Garbo. I can't actually use this. <laughs> I'm going to cut little... Oh no, that's right. Because I'm, I'm, I'm pushing apart. Oh god, it's getting really silly. <laughs> Drawing all this in my head. Hmm. Okay. Screw to cut. Right plane. Before I do that, let's make this a little thicker, like six mils. And make this top bit just a little bit thinner. Screw to cut. Hang on, let's find it going to. I have no idea what I'm listening to. This is supposed to be the Calm Electronica. <laughs> I'm just going to skip it. Because it's too weird. <laughs> All right, right plane. We are holding forces. They're going that way. Five mils is probably fine. Not fine. <laughs> okay, those are all equal. Let's make this 1.5. This is like 30. That's actually too steep. 45? Uh, 60. For it. Bring this down a little. 8. Oh, that's not tangent. That's why that's getting all goofy. If I force that to be tangent, this should be a lot less goofy. Uh, 1.2, maybe? That seems a little more reasonable. Need to add one more line to make this. And horizontal. Oops, made that construction by accident. Horizontal, please. There we go, nice. Now it's just a matter of positioning up and down, which isn't really an issue because I can basically put it as close as I want. So we'll make that, say, five millimeters. And then, oops. Your sketch pattern. But I'm not going to pick the x axis, I'm going to pick this line, I think. And just tell it to send it. <laughs> Make like six of them or something, it's probably fine. Actually, if I do this later, and if I don't do this in the sketch, then I can do it with um, a proper pattern tool, and that's going to be a little more safe. So let's do features, extruded cut, offset, say, 5 millimeters. Sorry, offset, 5 millimeters. Up to next. Okay. 
mirror, right plane, features, pattern. I would like to go in this direction, please. Actually, we'll do we'll do top plane directions. That will break that will break two more things I ever changed that phase. So features, these ones, uh, their direction. Let's do up to reference, up to this reference. I wonder if I can do offset from, rest from reference. Here we go, offset distance, five millimeters. And then five millimeters, Oop, 15 millimeters maybe. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. It's not really as much adjustability as I'd like, but I could fix that. Let's do let's do number. Let's do like six. Offset distance ten millimeters. Yeah, that'll put enough meat on the bottom there. Let's have eight of them, and it's gonna break horribly and cut a whole bunch of things out. We're just gonna shorten this up to compensate. And it's still not quite enough. Two millimeters? That's starting to get into hard to actually reach for or hard to actually it's entirely possible that I won't actually be able to set things into that. <laughs> Which I've just realized. <laughs> Whoops. Uh Okay. I do have to tweak this sketch. Since this has to be something you can slot into and that it isn't going to pry itself out of. Which means this angle has to be a little bit smaller. Or a little bit, yeah, a little bit smaller. Better than not being able to sneeze. Oh, hang on. There we go. Okay. Now we just have to tell it how deep we want it. Which I'm going to arbitrarily say is four millimeters. I think I want that. To maybe even shrink this a little bit. I do want to automatically have a fillet up here, though. So we will do a quick extend entities and trim. Whoops, hang on. Trim. <laughs> Make that tangent. This guy equal. And also this guy. Whoops, that's not even close to right. Five mils. Hey, that almost looks not bad. <laughs> yeah, I should kind of dig that. Okay, this is going to go into a new folder because this is now too complicated. Uh, adjustable clamp. 21009 adjustable clamp. Well, it's clamp base. Whoops. Projects 2021. Clamp base. Nope, not clamp base. <laughs> base. Okay, save. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. And I'm realizing now 
that I should probably do a chamfer on the inside of this before. Well, no, she can get a chamfer, she's gonna fill it. Gets a full fill on the inside there, since that's, you know, sharp internal corner. But, mirror and pattern are probably gonna skip that, because it's not selected yet for that. But since the linear pattern is patterning the mirror, and the mirror already has the fillet, it should just go all the way down. And it does. Nice. So now, numbers we're dealing with. We've got this primary sketch, and we want to be 15 millimeters off from the side that we are defining as sort of the flat face here. And now I just have to figure out how I want to do that. It's just going to be messy and weird. Open this up a little bit, just that, that question isn't so difficult. Whoops, not front plane, please, right plane. from the end, and then I'm going to kind of arbitrarily, hang on, I do need to define spacing on that other one, because otherwise I'll never have a way to, to guarantee distance between between these 9.31 millimeters, that's, that's the max distance. Center distance, 7.31 millimeters. Who's going to be able to draw that? Certainly not me, I have no, no intention of doing that. Okay, mention not 7.3, let's do... Just do like 10. 10's fine. <laughs> and then if we check this overall height, 16 millimeters. So if I make it so that I can grab onto two of them with like an extension pad below. So what's the distance from this line to this one? 25 millimeters. Very handy. messages. Charlie make a thin extrude. Howdy, the person that just showed up. This is no longer uh, what I originally intended this stream to be. Looks good. Autofill it. What happens if I do autofill at corners? Oh, that's awful. Don't do that. Boss. Uh, right plane. Quickly lock everything back up. These two might not be tangent. No, those are tangent. These ones aren't tangent, though. That's grody. Got 60 again. Tangent. These guys parallel. That's two millimeters there. 
these are, I think, one millimeter. Four millimeter height. Offset by five millimeters for now seems fine. To surface. Actually, can I do through all? And when I'm near that, is that gonna come out okay? Oh, no, I should do the move face now, though. Point one. What direction? Point two, actually. No, let's move faces. Okay, so it doesn't like shrinking those bases, but it will do the whole thing at once, which is bizarre. All right, whatever floats the boat, I guess. Four, mirror. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to do that with the linear pattern in here, actually. Linear sketch pattern. Off this edge. I want to come down by 10. Move face is gonna break because I don't have all these extra faces selected. Chamfer added. Hmm. This could really use a chamfer in there as well, just so that I have some clearance to add a fillet on this, what would otherwise be a very sharp interior edge. mirror the whole body. I feel like that's a really lazy solution, but it does get what I need. Adjustable clamp bottom. Alright, let's go make an assembly. I pin this so that I can drag all my parts in. Clamp base and clamp bottom. Float this. I really ought to make it so that it doesn't... There's got to be a setting somewhere that lets me separate the float, or, or separate the initial fix when it brings in a new part, just for, like, convenience sake. Okay, so that's made it in place. Let's try... Make one of those. Making one of those. And then making these coincident. Do a quick evaluate interference. No interferences. Nice. Cool. So that works at least. Um, I've also just realized that I don't want to have those two concentrics there. I want to have this. The sample for this should be all the way at the bottom, really. Because that's where I'm testing sort of the limits of. Well, that's where I want things to match up, really, at the bottom here. Let's put those two faces. Yeah, okay. That is off to a good start. Now... Let's 
see, these fillets are three millimeters. So we're gonna go add a handful of fillets. And then a quick full round out here, which is the one that I'm worried is gonna break. Nope, came through just fine, all right. This is going to look really weird. <laughs> Suited boss. I'm going to convert all these edges. And then trim this guy. Make this say... It'll be a thin feature for sure. 3 millimeters. Selected contours. Just this one, please. Hang on. What's it doing? Did I accidentally add too many edges? Nope. Weird. Okay. Exit sketch. Extruded boss. Alright. Flip this. I'm going to do this in two directions. We're going to have a blind downward so that I can have some, some sort of gussets over here. I'll make that maybe 12 millimeters. And then this one, going the other direction, is going to come up just enough so I can get some reinforcement up here. And we'll make that I don't know. Wild guess and say... Oh, hang on. I can do offset from surface, too. So I can do from here, say I want... 6 millimeters? Yeah, there we go. Alright. Another extruded cut on the right plane. Just gonna quickly select everything. Do a quick convert entities. Trim the ones I don't need. I think it's just those two. But also these guys. Well, maybe this one too. I'm gonna do it as two. Oh no, no, I do want that one because I need to have some sort of continuity there. all tangent, make that all nice and swoopy. Tangent. Okay. And equal. That should lock that all in place. It will be a little trickier, I think, to nicely make this meet up. Well, maybe not so bad. I'm just going to make it kind of rough 45, 45 degrees on that interior gusset there. Just totally wing a number for, uh... Oh, I am, I think I'll need to save one of these as construction to make this, uh, symmetric, though. It's kind of important. Oops, I deleted an edge that I should have. Entities. Yep, that's fine. Hang on. I think it's because I have some already existing edges here. It doesn't like me for that. What? Why can't I? Why can't I offset that? How rude. I don't know why it wouldn't let me do that. Can I convert just that edge? I can. That is good enough. So we're going to extend these until everything all matches up. Just a quick cleanup. Five mils is fine. Why is that one not defined though? Oh! <laughs> because it's not tangent. Who could have guessed? Certainly not me. Okay, fine. We get to be a bit plain there. This... Ah, okay. Hang on. 
now through all both flip side to cut sick now I've got a pretty well supported and on top of that I can go back to this thin extrude and say I only want that to be four millimeters high or I only want that to be three millimeters high and that'll end up being pretty tall too because it needs to be kind of stiff to um, or it needs to have a little bit of offset anyway to carry the foot on the end of the clamp so that is totally all right and what's he complaining about now Oh, hang on. Ah, there we go. Yeah. It didn't like being assigned to the midpoint, but it was no longer the midpoint, so... Now it should be safe. Looks good to me. And I'm also just gonna... Do I want to extend that all the way back there? I think I do. So we're going to convert that and trim some stuff off. It's going to break some things. Let's see. I don't want that to be converted at all. It's tangent to something that doesn't exist. There should be a point way up here that I can make coincident with this line to bring us back into a regular swoopy shape. That's coincident with something that no longer exists. This is coincident with something that no longer exists. This is coincident with something that no longer exists. That's coincident with something that no longer exists. I have to delete a whole bunch of edges here. Just pick all my edges. Well, let's, let's do this one at a time, actually. Better to be safe. Extend. Vert and tangent and clean again. No more errors. Yeah, that does look better. And on top of that, it lets me do a oops, quick fill on the inside here too. That is enormous. Oh man, that does not need to be that large. Two millimeters is probably more reasonable. The grossly overzealous building, and I'm not even really haven't even like actually started modeling their critical feature, which is a hole in the middle yet. <laughs> Let's bump this up a little. Let's uh, change this to like a millimeter. Now it's more in line. Oh, it does make me realize that I need some chamfers up there, though. Let's fix that part. Chamfer... here and here. One millimeter. Symmetric. Yeah. It's probably gonna make it harder to print, but who cares? I know I don't. Okay. So now come back to this part and add well I'll go up before the fillets actually full wizard hmm. I think I want this to be M10 maybe Positions, this face, on the origin, call it a day, see what breaks in champers, nothing, fortunately. Now, we have to add a real thread, and I'm just realizing that I've made a lot of this unprintable. Hang on, why is the proper type? Huh. Thread setting wrong, I guess. Add M10 by four. Let's do by six, actually. 
Well, Horus versus no. Oh, hang on, that's M100. <laughs> M M10125. Actually, what is the standard M10 thread? Master M10 thread. M10 socketed capture. I'm just going to see what the standard thread pitch is. Looks like 1.5 is the standard, so we'll go with that. No reason to make it harder to print than it already is. So, start on this edge. And I'm not cutting thread. I want to do a metric tap. No, hang on. Metric die. I want it to extrude thread. I wanted to trim with start face. And I'll have to have some offsets, I think, to make sure that it actually gets all the way to the edge. Okay, and end face. Oh, that's start location. End condition up to selection. Up here, please. Trim with start face. That looks good. Nope. Not even close. What did you think you were doing, SolidWorks? I told it to trim with the end face, and it just straight up didn't. Which is very rude. Oh, you know what? I think those fillets screwed it up, because when I moved it before the fillets, then it works just fine, so. Yeah, that looks not that bad. I'm going to add a quick chamfer, see if I can't add maybe 0.6 on uh, probably angle. Start with that. Partial preview, full preview, change propagation, nothing. Okay. That means that I have to do it uh, rooted cut on this plane. Oops. From the bottom, please. Thank you. From the bottom. Favorite trick for making these studs look right. Go to the outer surface. Pick it to be just 0.4 or however much chamfer you want. And then you can extrude a cone inward that cuts out just exactly as much as you want. So, 0.5. Up to next. Boink. And now I have a nice little chamfer. I think this is probably going to end up getting printed on its side. Which may or may not be a good thing. Hmm. Hello, TBD. Figure it out. Oh. No, it's not quite TBD. I can't just say TBD and have things be good. Because I really want to have the screw printed on its side. Because that gives me some ability to have some flexures for grabbing onto a foot on the end. Print still going alright? Go take a look at that actually. If you pan up a little bit, you can see I've got a spool holder up top, feeding down to the of course, the filament's going all over the place, because of course it is. Ugh. Man, if I don't extrude up to that, then... Oh. It could print a lot nicer. That's what I'm worried about. Hmm. Let's move on to the uh, to the fastener. <laughs> I'm just trying not to think about it too hard. Uh, quick revolve boss, front plane. I'm gonna start with. Hmm. I'm gonna start with 
a sphere tip. And I'll explain why in a bit. So I have to have a center point in there that I can reference with some material out past it. line up here to use as the construction line. All that 10 mils. Say length wants to be 40. Whoops. Hang on. Length wants to be maybe 40 millimeters. Wow, really? Seems too long. Maybe this Maybe this hole is just really small. Yeah, hang on, this clamp bolt's really small. 20 millimeters is nothing. <laughs> hang on, I've done a whole bunch of math bad. Go change a whole bunch of dimensions. <laughs> this is going to be like a nano size clamp, so I'm going to just adjust that a little bit. Let's make this... Thirty-five. Make this twenty-five. Six. Eight, maybe. So we have a little more meat behind the behind the capture points. Bring this up to like ninety. That'll add a few more. Hmm. It just it just stops playing music if it gets to the end of the page. It doesn't like move to the next page. <sighs> I don't know why I'm ever surprised. Oh, that's way too small now. Oh, why did I make this? 35, I think? Yeah, 35. So this now needs to be 35 wide. this can I just make that 20 unilaterally that's never I'll never be able to fit faster against that up against there let's do 18 maybe maybe 15 Ugh. 15 then we can go go back and fix this thread so now it's gonna be an m15 thread Nope, there is no M15. Alright, M16, 2. And it might throw a fit because it's not in an M16 hole. Sixteen. Alright, I guess I'm designing an M16 fastener now. Whoops. That's a little more what I expected this to look like. Where did my, uh, my reference line go? There we go, There's that construction line is being naughty. This no longer, oh, because it doesn't have a doesn't have a diameter anymore. Oh man, I left it on the octopi cam for. <laughs> oh my god, I have I've been meaning to get this plug in uh, that'll switch between based on what my window focus is. I really need to get that set up because it seems like about once every third stream I'll forget what I'm 
I'll forget what I'm doing or I'll forget to switch it back. Oh, I'm super sorry about that. Oh, man. <laughs> One of these days I'll get it. I'll figure out how to be a real pro streamer. Ugh. <sighs> This three mils. It's a good cut. I'm just gonna do it from this plane rather than being fiddly and trying to do it from anywhere else. Let's say overlap is 1.5, diameter is six. Select those two points, make them vertical. That won't go anywhere quick circular sketch pattern parameters uh, edge yeah wait edge okay that's hang on wait that's not right <laughs> why is it there we go okay let's do 12 12 seems reasonable and it's going to do the thing where it can't decide what it actually wants to link to Let's go check it around a little. Okay. Through all. Yeah. That looks pretty good. But I am realizing that I want to do just a little more building. If only to the tune of maybe two millimeters. So then when I do this cut extrude, chamfer. I'm very lucky it will let me select nope it won't okay maybe I can pick the feature then ah, I guess I can't okay time to pick the same face 30 times <laughs> you know what no I don't have to do that there's the fillet tool the fillet tool is magical and vastly better th than the other tool uh, 0.6 maybe Okay, then we just pick one edge and then say uh, virtual left face, whatever that is. Well, it seems to have picked all the edges I want, so good enough for me. Then I can go back to the fillet. Magical, magical tool if like you want to use the fillet tool's selections and are willing to accept that instead. Then you can generate uh, the diametrical style chamfers. Um, but using the chamfer or using the fillet selection tools, which are way better, like frustratingly much better. <laughs> okay, let's do. I think. Uh, no, wait. I need to add my funky clampy features. A whole bunch of messages. Uh, how do I want to do this? Revolved cut from the bottom on top plane. This is gonna look extra goofy. I don't wanna do this. Okay, two circles. Some arcs between them. This will all make sense in about 30 seconds when I finish drawing this. I hope. If it doesn't, then you're feel free to mock me. Equal and parallel and concentric. And I want maybe a say one centimeter diameter. Oh, actually, one centimeter. One centimeter is huge. Let's do let's do eight eight millimeter diameter ball cavity in the middle there. And I want to have. Well, I need to have an axis line at some point, so I'll just add that now. I want that to come back maybe 10 millimeters down the thread and have the cutout be, I don't know, maybe four millimeters wide. We'll figure out in a second if that's too small. Good sketch, roll to cut. There we go. Now we got our cabin. Um, though I am forgetting, I do actually need some other feature to limit 
what my gap is. Which is what should be the real determining factor, I think. Oh, phooey, that's going to be a mess, though. Hmm. What if I just... <laughs> what if I just winged it? What if I just drew a circle in here and said this with an angle is how big this is going to be? <laughs> I bet it'd work. Oh, wait a minute. No, I could uh, I could come from this angle and I could divine I could define a revolve. Yeah, okay, that's much better. <laughs> that's a much less terrible plan. Oops. Hang on, did I... I think I did something funny on this revolve. You know what, no. Not gonna worry about it. I was gonna think maybe I could fix this by switching it back to be frontwards, but that's not really important, so we'll just do it from over here. Uh, extruded cut. Right plane? Yeah, okay. I want to cut... a hole... Shape something like this. And I want this guy. Can I make that be on that curve? I guess I can't. So what I can do is nope, I can't do it with that point either. <laughs> very rude, SolidWorks. Well, at the very least I can define this angle to be maybe 30. Oh hang on, if I make this I merge this, this can't be coincident with here because I have to use it to control exactly how much slop I've got, or rather how much overlap I've got um, on the edge there. I think I only want like, 0.8 millimeters should be enough is my rough guess, but I could be wrong. We'll find out. <laughs> I think this was D1 at whatever sketch was down here, sketch 3. Do you want it sketch three, really? Times two? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Nope, that's a cut extrude, not a cut revolve. <laughs> Actually, I should go make sure that I'm grabbing the right dimension there. Yep, do you want it sketch three times two? Looks good to me. We are going to make this... From over here, I'm going to make it tangent to this edge. So that way, it always gets the whole shebang. Well, cut. Yeah, there we go. Not bad. And I'm realizing I want that to be filled. So we're going to fix that. <laughs> Which means I have to get rid of this dimension first. Those two, and that should only be like one millimeter. Whoops. Nope. Hang on. Doesn't really want to let me draw a straight line that's tangent to this guy. Or rather, dimension to it. So, I guess we have to dimension this way. Kind of messy, but it's fine. Nope, not vertical. There we go. <laughs> Things shuffling around and doing weird stuff. Computers being computers. Alright, let's add some filling in here. Say one millimeter. Out on this surface. I think I want to shorten that up just a little bit, but not too much. Maybe 12. That might break apart. It's really all that I'm worried about. Because this is going to have to be printed with this end down, and there's not a way around that. And it won't let me edit that sketch, because that dimension is too far in. Let's do 0.6 instead. 
not quite as much flex induced on those. Oh, I really haven't even saved this yet. Um, clamping bolt. I'm going to suppress that, see if it breaks anything. Nope. Okay. Chamfer. I am going to chamfer that instead, actually. So we'll pop a quick chamfer in there. Two millimeters is fine. Mostly because I want to chamfer... I want to chamfer the end of the thread to try and avoid stress concentrations there. But that should be enough to... Let's see. Thread location. Start face. Okay. It's not for me. The access cannot be used. Can I pick a face? I guess I can't. That's rude. <laughs> Trim with start face. Then end condition up to selection. I'm just going to pick a point down at the edge here, I guess. Should be fine. Well, we'll do... Hang on. If we come back to this evolve sketch here, say, what is this? D2 at sketch 1? Well, I'm going to delete it, so it won't be, but whatever this dimension is, 48 millimeters. That's D2 at sketch 1. If we do our thread feature and tell it to be length of D2 of D2 at sketch 1, then it'll always go the full length of the part. We don't really have to worry about that. Okay, that looks good. Uh, metric die, M16-2. Trim with start face, trim with end face. There's not an end face, so that's fine. What happens if I delete this face? Oh, doesn't like that. Uh-oh. Oh, no, we're, I guess we're okay. That's weird. Oh, no, it did actually pick that face. Okay. No, we. so what we can do is... Ooh. Hang on, I like this. Um, instead of having the chamfer there, and it'll bulk because I'm getting rid of that edge, I'm going to reinstate this fillet and pick this edge and see if I can't... Oh, wait, that deleted the thread too. Nuts. <laughs> well, we'll just pick that. Try some stuff, see if it works. Sketch one... Trim with start and end face. I am going to need a negative or offset of two millimeters, maybe? That should be enough. Nope, that's not even close to right. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, gross. Okay. I think maybe I can control Z my way back to that chamfered one, though. Yeah, okay. So now we've got our chamfer back. And now we can do the offset. And offset it into the part. And it should... Yeah! Terminates that very nicely. I mean, in a perfect world, on a real part, I think you'd probably have a thread gutter, but uh, this works just as well for my terrible modeling. Ah, yes, now we have unts. Point <laughs> six. Looks fairly okay. Doesn't immediately want to make doesn't make me immediately want to tear my hair out, so potentially it's the most you can hope for. Alright, let's drop that in and see if it fits. It should, I think. We should have just enough clearance on the head, but clamping bolts. 
Um, mate. Can I even do a thread mate? It's been a while since I've. Uh, revolutions per millimeter. Distance per revolution. Two millimeters. The. Uh, well, hang on. Wait. <laughs> this guy. Just cylindrical on this guy. Flip those around. Oh, that's very silly. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, I need to suppress that mate while I get this into the right spot. Uh, suppress. Drag that down. Unsuppress. Why is it not rotating? Why, or why is it not moving? Should be moving at two millimeters per revolution. Don't reverse. Well, actually do reverse. I think that's correct. Hey, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Grossly pointless. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's so stupid, but I love it. <laughs> oh, and it doesn't fit. <laughs> Crap. That looks like an easy fix, though. Just a quick cutout. We'll call this the uh, full clamp assembly. Oh, wait, something's not right there. Oh, yeah, that's... I made it concentric with... I made it concentric with the wrong thing. Whoops. Okay. Not on that part of the clamping bolt, but... That's not cylindrical. Come on, one of these faces has to be at least kind of cylindrical. There we go. Okay. Hey, check that out. It even fits now when I made it correctly. <laughs> yeah. Watch me print this and it just will not work. It wasn't centered correctly for a while. Uh, what I had done was I forgot that this edge or this face out here is not concentric with the with the thread bore, and so when I made it something that wasn't concentric with the thread bore, it wasn't concentric with the thread bore, because <laughs> I forgot what my model looks like. But that's fixed now, so at least I've got that going for me. Hang on. Can I pop this out? Like, for a little while, I had this Maybe this will actually work if I set it up. Wow! I don't actually have clearance on the threads yet. I'm, I think my guess is what it's gone and done, and we can check this with a... Um, well, that's not even close to right. <laughs> Hang on. Let me s quickly suppress this roommate. Re or unsuppress it. Yeah, okay, so it by default it models it with um with no clearance on those threads, which is frustrating and dumb, but SolidWorks explicitly tells you that the threads that it generates with the thread tool are not to be used for actual manufacturing purposes, and if you do need to manufacture them, you should be going and looking at the machinery's handbook to figure out what the thread should look like. So what I'm gonna do or what I usually do rather is I will take uh, 0.1 millimeters off of all the faces on each side. So just do that. And I'm now realizing that I'm going to have to do that to all those ones up there too. But price you pay. Well, hang on. I could save myself some thinking and just 
do it on this part instead. And then I don't have to select quite so many faces. And this has more meat on it anyway, so. I like to have um, 0.2 face to face clearance. I've found that that works pretty well. That looks like that's what I've got it done there. Has it moved the right direction? It hadn't actually. No, okay, now we have clearance. Come and take a look at the other part now. Section view again. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so 0.2 millimeters surface to surface clearance. I've had pretty good. Uh <laughs> yeah. I've I've had pretty good uh pretty good luck with this. I think maybe I even have the the first time that I really tried to do lots of threads was on my TS my first TS100 case. This was back when I still had the educational version before I bought my own. Um, but you can even see, I think, I've probably done it on the inside, because I didn't have a whole bunch of space on the outside. So let's see, knurling features, thread features, if we come and edit this, uh, this face move that adjusts the faces for the threads, um, it moves it in by 0.1 millimeters, and I bet we can find an equivalent one pop out of that component into the other one. Two interior thread. Wow, I guess maybe I did only do... I'd be surprised. Maybe I maybe I was only running with 0.1 on those. If that's the case, then I will only do 0.1 on the exterior thread. Because that... I mean... A closer fitting thread is always a good idea. Anyway, okay, out of that one, save, exit. Uh, yeah, let's only do 0.1 millimeters, since apparently that was good enough in the past for for a fairly similar component. Well, not fairly similar, but similar enough that I can apply the lessons I've learned. Oops, I want that on, please. Yeah, that actually looks pretty good. So, that's probably good enough to print. Um, I didn't really have a plan for the rest of the stream, and I mean, it started out as me modeling a, a stamp dispenser after starting uh, this one being printed. So, I'm not really on track for the stream anymore, but oh, wow, we're up to two hours. I spent a lot of time doing that. Whoops. Uh, yeah, but that, that looks neat. Oh, you know what? No, there's still one more thing that I need to add for this, and that is a clamp foot. So we're going to do that first. Uh... See you later. Thanks for showing up and uh, saying hi. Let's make one more part. This is just going to be a straight revolve because it doesn't need to be more complicated than that. Incident. Four millimeters. Hmm. Yeah, four millimeters is fine. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm going to have to draw some stupid lines. construction? No, they are not. That would have thrown off a feature later, I am certain. Just make these two equal for, for laughs. Fifteen millimeters high, maybe? And maybe... Oh, I don't know. 
some number of other millimeters in diameter. Blurdy seems fine. Axis revolution, there's really only one there. This is the plant foot. I'm pop this guy in. Centric. And I think what I'll do is I will mate uh, the right plane of this one to the right plane of the. Uh, Hang on, that's not right. I don't want the right plane of the bolt. I want the front plane of the bolt. Because otherwise it won't be able to, to swing back and forth a little. Yeah, there we go. And then that is a full clamping assembly. Whether or not it works, I guess... I have to print the thing and find out, but that's kind of amusing. I like that. This was the idea that I had in my head. It's like, what if I wanted to just way stupid overbuild a uh, a clamp for the underside of this little <laughs> this little stamp dispenser? Because this one is, I mean, it's adequate and that it will hold the part to a desk, but it's not all that great. <laughs> it's like this. Come on. This, that fillet's inadequate. There's no, like, external reinforcement to make that kind of stiff. I don't know. I just wanted to do it a little better. So, here we are. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have anything else uh, to the person who just showed up. I hope you're coming back from doing something else, because I am only just now wrapping up. Um... I'm probably not going to post this one anytime soon, if ever, just because it's not a particularly important model. It doesn't really do anything besides amuse me and look kind of funny. So, if if I end up prototyping this and developing a little further, then maybe I will... Uh, maybe I'll put it up on Thingiverse or something, but I doubt anyone's going to want it, so... Oh, I hope you didn't just tune in. <laughs> Unfortunate timing. I've been going for roughly two hours now. As always, feel free to post questions in the comments, or uh, if you have something that you think you'd like me to design, that you think I could teach you something while designing it, uh, feel free to send me an email, and I will be uh, will always be happy to answer. Ah, well, I guess if you want, you can rewatch the stream, Jerry, but. Uh, <laughs> put a look on it um i don't think it would fit actually so i don't have the logo that i have right now is i think 60 millimeters by 40 millimeters roughly or a little smaller than that thanks yeah i hope i hope it goes well it looks like um we can switch back to octoprint right now and take a look at that it seems like it's doing all right um just casual visual inspection um there's nothing that's obviously falling apart or falling off of it, and the sports seem to be doing okay, so... Should be done here in the next, uh, two hours or so? I don't know, it's enough time to go work on actual work and... <laughs> go get dinner, which I now sorely need, because it's almost six. <sighs> yeah, well, thank you all for coming. Uh, have a nice night. Boink!